If you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter number 1. Psalms, chapter number 1. And I want to read Psalms, chapter number 1, and verse number 6. Psalms 1, verse 6. The Bible says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you, dear Lord, for salvation, full and free, dear God. Thank you, dear Lord, for sending your Son on all of your cross to die for our sins. I pray, God, you'll be with me this morning. Give me what I need, dear Lord, that I can preach your message. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with us this morning. Hinder the powers of Satan this morning as he tries to hinder the service, dear God. I pray, Lord, you'll just fill us with your Holy Spirit. There ain't there be any here in the midst this morning that isn't saved, dear God, that you'll just put strong Holy Ghost conviction on them. Save them before she turn them too late. And say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In Psalms chapter number 1, the first psalm, we come to the psalm of two ways. By way of introduction, first of all, there's a contrast. There's two men mentioned in Psalms chapter 1. You have the godly man, the blessed man, that word blessed there means happy, the happy man, the man who follows after the Lord. And then you have the ungodly man, the wicked man, the man that rebels against God, the man that doesn't live righteously. There's a contrast. The blessed man is grounded in God's Word, and the Bible tells us that he's going to bring forth fruit. And the ungodly man, the Bible tells us, is not so. He's tossed to and fro by this world, and he's going to end up, he's going to perish. There's a contrast. There's really only two people in this world. There's saved people and there's lost people. We try to make a middle ground to that. We try to say that there's somebody in the middle. But really there isn't. Your heart's either right with God or it's not. Jesus either has saved you or he hasn't saved you. And as Christians, we're either walking with God or we're not walking with God. We're either obeying God or we're disobeying God. We're either full of the Holy Spirit of God or we're living after this world. Amen. There's no such thing as being partially filled with the Holy Spirit. There's no such thing as just having parts of the fruit of the Spirit. You're missing long-suffering, but you have another fruit of the Spirit. That's not how that works. You're either filled with the Holy Spirit of God or you're not. You're a stumbling block or you're a disobedient Christian. But there's a contrast here to these two men in Psalms chapter 1. You have the godly man and then you have the ungodly man. There's also a character in, this, in these verses. The blessed man is a happy man. That's his character. We'll read about this in just a couple of minutes about certain things that he does. But there's a character difference in these verses. There's a big difference between the godly man and the ungodly man. There's, it's not hard to uh, tell the difference in these verses between the man who's following after, will, after the will of God and the person who's not. There's character. Your character tells what kind of person you really are. If you're a godly individual or you're an ungodly individual. You're either following Christ this morning or you're not. There's character. And then there's a conclusion. I read it in verse number 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Not only is there a contrast and there's character, but there's a conclusion to both of these individuals. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Job said in 23 verse 10, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Then the Bible says, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. There's a conclusion. There's going to be an end for the ungodly man one of these days. They're going to have to stand before an almighty God and give an account for everything that they've done. There's going to be an end for them. There's a conclusion. I want to preach on the topic this morning. Psalms chapter number 1. Which way are you going? Which way are you going? We have two men, we have two different ways, two different paths 
in this chapter. I want to preach two main topics this morning. Which way are you taken? Number one, we see the sanctified man. The sanctified man. That word sanctified means to be set apart. It means to be holy. It means that your heart is in fellowship with God. That your heart is in fellowship with the brethren. It means you're close to God's Word. And you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're conformed to the image of Christ. The sanctified man. Set apart for the service of God. If you would, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Which way are you going this morning? We're talking about the contrast of the two men, the ungodly man and the godly man in Psalms chapter 1. Number one, we see the sanctified man. There's his direction in verse number one. Which way are you going? The sanctified man is going in this direction. The Bible says he's walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. Christian people have no business getting advice and inspiration and direction and influence from this world. Amen. We have no business whatsoever modeling our lives after this world. The Bible says, Blessed is the man. Happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hear it say something and somebody says, Well, if that happened to me, I would have done this. Well, that's not always the best way to take. That's not always good advice. And the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not after the world's advice. This world will tell you every which way to go. They'll tell you you need to do this, this, and this. They'll lay everything out for you. But that's, that's not what we're supposed to live by as, as God's children. We have this Bible to live by. If it's not in the Bible, we don't have any business with it. Amen. Blessed is the man. We see his direction. That word counsel is talking about advice, instruction. Counsel of the ungodly. If you walk out through this world as a Christian, you're going to be absolutely miserable. You're going to be a stumbling block to fellow believers. You're not going to be a witness to a lost and dying world. His direction. It says here, Nor standeth in the way of sinners. It's sad when you see God's people get so caught up in the world that they're in the midst of everything going on. They've got their nose in everything. And here we are to be sanctified and to be set apart. Here we are called to be witnesses of Christ, but we're too busy getting out in the world and we've got, we've got our foot in just about everything. That's a miserable Christian. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that doesn't stand in the way of sinners. Then it says here, Nor sitteth, in the seat of the scornful. We're talking about the righteous man. We're talking about the sanctified man. The happy man. The blessed man. The man who's at peace. The man who has joy. The man who has a full heart. Who's content, as Paul says. The man who, who's staying the course in his Christian life. The man or woman there. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. They don't sit in the scornful seat. What is that, that word scorn? What does that mean? It means to ridicule, to scoff, to despise. That's what that word means. You know, you expect that out of a bunch of atheists, don't you? You expect that out of a bunch of sinful people to make fun of individuals and constantly have something negative to say and, and put, put individuals down. And you, you look at the agnostics and the atheists, how they're constantly putting down Christianity and making fun of Christianity. What's sad is when you get Christians who end up doing the same thing. The Bible says, Happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. 
A Christian who sits in that scorner seat, who mocks this world and is aggressive and in a rage with this world, is not a happy Christian. It's not a happy Christian. You got all this stuff going around now about how, uh, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but a lot of Christians are mad about this whole Starbucks thing with the, the red cup. Have y'all seen that? And they're mad because they're not putting Merry Christmas on the Starbucks cup. And so they're, they're having Merry Christmas written on there. My friend, if the only reason we're saying Merry Christmas is to make a political statement or to start a movement or to let people hear our voice, I believe we've missed the true meaning of Christmas. Amen. I believe we've missed how Jesus Christ became flesh to dwell among us so that because the first Adam failed and brought sin upon this world, he, the second Adam, came, lived 100% as man, 100% as God, yet without sin, died on an old rugged cross for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. That's why I say Merry Christmas this morning. Not to make a political statement, not to be angry, not to be aggressive. That's what this scorner is. There's no joy in the child of God who says Merry Christmas just to tick off a liberal person. There's no joy or peace in the child of God who says that just to make somebody mad or tick someone off. Amen. I'm glad when I say Merry Christmas this morning, it's because Christ saved me from sin. Now, if that offends you, I could care less, but I don't say it to offend you. Amen? I say it because I'm saved. But there's no, there's no joy in a Christian like that. Which way are you going this morning? The sanctified man. We see his direction. You know, if we focus more on being conformed to the image of Christ, dying to our flesh, being filled with the Holy Spirit of God and being a light to this lost and dying world, we'd be a whole lot more joyful and peaceful as Christians. That's what this, this sanctified man does here in Psalms chapter number 1. That's what Paul did. Paul was conformed to the image of Christ. Paul said, I die daily. Paul didn't let everything of this world get under his skin. He said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We see his direction. Number two, we see his delight. Look at verse number two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He doesn't find delight in winning an argument or a debate. He doesn't find delight and pleasing his flesh, or getting his way, or everything going according to his plan. He finds delight in the Word of God. He finds peace and joy from reading and staying and meditating on the Word of God. His delight. It says here, it says, meditate day and night. That doesn't just mean to just kind of daydream and read through our Bible real fast and say, there, I did it, and think we're good for the day. This is talking about the man who meditates on the Word of God. We can memorize just about everything else. We memorize lyrics to songs. We memorize all kinds of things. It'd be good for some of us to memorize some Scripture, wouldn't it? It'd be good for some of us to read a verse in the morning and meditate on that the entire day and ask the Holy Spirit of God to truly show us what that means. This is an individual who stays in the Word of God from the moment he wakes up to the moment they go to sleep. They stay in the Word of God. Their delight is in the Word of God. That's the, that's the top part of their day. That's the, 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 the best part of their day is opening the Word of God. We see his delight. And then we see, in verse number 3, his devotion. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I preached a message a couple years ago about uh, 
don't miss the harvest. And I use these, these verses here. But notice it said, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You know, Paul, for example, wasn't always bringing forth fruit. Agrippa didn't get saved. Felix didn't get saved. But there was a time where he did see people get saved in his ministry. The sanctified man isn't going to see somebody get saved every service. The godly person isn't going to have, lead somebody to the Lord every day. And if they do, praise God. But that's not always going to happen. But what this is saying is that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. This individual is staying faithful to the word of God. Is not letting the flesh determine whether they're going to serve God or not. Sometimes as Christians we get devastated if a certain number of people don't show up to church or if we don't get the results that we're looking for. See, not this man. This man, we see his devotion. If you look in verse number 3, you see there's a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. It says his leaf. That tree and the rivers of water, the tree is the child of God. Okay? The rivers of water is the Word of God. And the leaf mentioned here is our testimony. Keep your place there, I'll read it. But in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10, it says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, and it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Lord says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word of God doesn't return void, folks. Amen. It doesn't. The Bible says it's forever settled in heaven. That's how a Christian keeps their life clean. is through the washing of the Word of God. We're saved by the blood. We keep our lives clean through the washing of the Word. We're talking about which way are you going this morning. We see, number one, the sanctified man. First of all, there is his direction. Then there's his delight. And then last of all, there's his devotion. Not only is he headed in the direction where he's... He's not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. He's separated from that. He's not standing in the way of sinners. He's not sitting in the seat of the scornful. He's staying in the Word of God. He's devoted to the Word of God. That's the sanctified man. And then we come down here to verse number 4, and we see the sinful man. Verse number 4 says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. The sinful man. First of all, we see his deception. It's amazing how today a lot of people aren't sure about anything, are they? There's so many different opinions going around. I heard some of the dumbest stuff about uh, people's opinions about what they think about these terrorist attacks over in Paris, uh, France, about how uh, ISIS isn't the enemy. You imagine David going in front of the Israelites before they go into battle, and they're looking at all these bloodthirsty Philistines out there, and David says, "Now, I know they hate us, and they hate our God, and they hate our nation, and they want to kill us, and they want to destroy our nation, and they want to destroy our." Uh, our entire country, our entire belief system, but they're not the real enemy here. They would look at him like, are you kidding me? Like, are, what, what, what are you talking about? See, this world has so many different opinions. My friend, there's enemies out there of Christianity. They are the enemy of Christianity. We have so many different opinions. We have so many different people who are politically correct, so on and so forth. But this world is confused. And the Bible says here, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. They're confused. The enemy's right in front of them. They can't even see it. They're told to go so many different ways. That, that chaff there, 
In verse number 4, that's the husk or the dry calyx of corn in the grasses. It just goes all over the place. They're not grounded in anything. They don't know what they believe. They're not sure about anything. But I'm here to tell you this morning, there is a sure Word of God. You see, the sinful man is deceived. He's deceived into thinking that nothing's grounded in this world. There's no way there's no way to turn in this world. He's deceived. That chaff there is pretty much just worthless matter. He's just going around every which way the wind blows, that's where he goes. You ever met any Christians like that? Whichever way the wind blows, that's where they go. Amen. Right. If the wind's blowing in this direction, that's the that's the direction they go. Then when the winds start going this way, then they turn the other way. They can't make up their mind. That's not the happy man. That's not the peaceful man. That's not the sanctified man. There's his deception. Then in verse number 5, there's his destruction. Verse number 5, the Bible says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. We all know that when God judges the saved, that's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. But when God judges the sinners later down the road, that's going to be the great white throne judgment. Those are two different judgments. Completely different. The Bible says the ungodly are not so, for like the chaff which the wind driveth away, that's their deception. But then it says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The ungodly cannot be where the righteous are. That's Bible. You can call me judgmental all you want. You can say, well, you're, you're being kind of mean there, preacher. But the Bible says that the ungodly and the righteous cannot be in the same place. God cannot allow sin into heaven. Amen. The ungodly can have as much fun as they want here on earth, but God will not allow sin into heaven. If the blood of Christ is not applied to your life, you are not only deceived this morning, but you're headed for destruction. You will not stand in the same judgment as those of us who are saved. You're going to be in a completely different judgment. That's the great white throne, and you're going to head to an eternal lake of fire. His destruction. And then last of all, in verse number 6, we see His doom. It says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, verse 28, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. That word perish means simply to be lost. Which way are you taking this morning? Which way are you going this morning? Are you in the direction of the sanctified man? Are you the, the individual who's trusted in Christ and repented of their sins? And not only that, but walk after Him and you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God and you don't get caught up in the matters of this world. You don't let the devil get the best of you. You stay in the Word of God. You meditate in the Word of God. You have a peace about you. You have a joy in your heart. You're content. You're not constantly lusting and, and, and constantly going after the, the direction of this world. Are you this person here in verse 4 through 6? Are you this sinful man? Deceived. Whichever way the wind blows, that's, when you, that's, that's what direction you're taking. There's his deception, there's his destruction, and then there's his doom. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Amen. The majority isn't always the best way. Right. It says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I'm going to close in John chapter number 10, verse number 10. John chapter number 10, I'm going to all turn there. 
by way of conclusion, I want to read this verse together. John 10, verse number 10. The Bible says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. This is Jesus, He says, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Do you know that Psalms chapter number 1 is actually a type of Christ? When Christ was on earth, that verse 1 through 3, 100% God, 100% man, yet without sin, verse 1 through 3, that was Christ. He didn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He didn't sit in the seat of the scornful. He didn't let those Pharisees and Sadducees get the best of them. That his delight was in the law of the Lord. That was the, the man, Jesus Christ, who set the example for us. And Paul says we're to be conformed to his image. My friend, this morning, which way are you taken? As a Christian this morning, are we acting like a child of God? Are we living like the world? Are we living like the individual God saved us from? God changed us, but yet we turn right back to it. And now we can't find pleasure or peace in anything. <coughs> Jesus said here in verse number 10, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If we don't walk in the counsel of the world, if we stay in the Word of God, you know, God will make our lives really just flourish for Him. We'll be peaceful. And we'll be content. But if we get caught up in this world and get aggressive and act like the world, how can we ever be how can we ever be a witness for the Lord? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Dear Lord, I pray that you'll touch this invitation. Use it for your honor and your glory. I pray, God, that if there's anyone here this morning who doesn't know you, that you'll put strong Holy Ghost conviction on them, save them before it's eternal too late. I pray, Lord, if there's someone here this morning who maybe have just kind of gotten away from you, dear Lord, that you'll put conviction on them that they'll get their heart right with you before the service is out. We say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to stand? What number you got? Number 155. As we sing, you come. Which way are you going this morning?